we are back taking a look at another comic book article today. Uh, I'm trying to differentiate my content just a little bit, just to give all of us some variety. And I want to start by saying that I am actually a fan of CBR.com in terms of their news. They cover things effectively a lot of times with comic news and superhero movie news. So I'm not a hater of, uh, of the CBR.com website. A lot of the times, however, their top five, their best five and worst uh, lists, I'm not the hugest fan of. I think a lot of times they kind of read as somebody just reading off a Wikipedia page about what is and is not popular and going from there. And I, I can't be sure that's what it is. It just, it comes off that way to me. So again, as always, as we cover this, I'm going to kind of give my opinion uh, where I differentiate from this list and what I think of their take. Uh, and please don't contact the author of this article. I think that we can keep the discussion here or over on Twitter at twitter.com slash degenerate J or over on Reddit on our newly launched Reddit at r slash degenerate J. So there's plenty of places we can talk about this without dragging the writer uh, because that's not what this is about. So let's look at the list of their five best and worst Batman events of all time. So these are essentially Batman comic events. Oh, uh, just real quick, there will be spoilers for these events in them. So if you see a title of something, like the first one is Dark Knight Strikes Again, just keep in mind there will be spoilers, so you've been warned. So the first one is The Dark Knight Strikes Again. This is probably the list from CBR so far that I've agreed with the most, but I want to start out by saying that I think that some, not all, but some of the hate for this story is a little unwarranted. Not only is it bad, but it's bad in comparison to The Dark Knight Returns, so I think that makes it a lot worse in people's eyes. It would sort of be like if you released A New Hope, right, for Star Wars, and then next thing you know, uh, Empire comes out and it sucks. Like, it's just not very good. Um, it would be seen as, like, the worst thing ever. Like, but it's not really. Uh, the problem with The Dark Knight Strikes Again, in my opinion, is it's just very underwhelming. It's supposed to be about Batman fighting a war on a corrupt government, essentially. Uh, it really escalates what was a sort of down-to-earth story in The Dark Knight Returns uh, and kicks it up like 10 notches unnecessarily. It has some bad portrayals of characters as well. Like, the portrayal of Dick Grayson in this, it could have been fine, right? It could have been done fine to turn him into a villain, but it was really rushed. You never see it. And since this is in the same continuities as Returns and even All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, you sort of just skip ahead years and years from that to him being a villain with very little explanation other than uh, Batman got rid of him for incompetence. The story just kind of makes Batman look like a bit of a douche, which admittedly the Miller version of Batman is, and I love him for it, but it just made him seem unlikable and not that interesting. And so I agree with them on this. I don't know if I'd really put it on the list of worst, and it wasn't really an event, I guess. I, I don't know how they're defining events. I guess we'll just call them uh, Batman stories is, is an event, I guess, uh, because events are usually things more like Event Leviathan or Deceased, not really just a random title, but fine. Uh, overall, I just think this story was underwhelming and disappointing. It's not the worst thing ever, but... Yeah, I guess it could make it onto the list, sure. So as far as the best, Metal is just insanely good. This is their first of the best titles for Batman. Uh, this title is one that a lot of people did read, actually. I, I think it had really good sales. People loved Scott Snyder's work on it. Uh, and it really introduced a lot of iconic characters, from Red Death to the Batman Who Laughs, this idea of the dark multiverse was really sort of revolutionary uh, and it really expanded upon like previous ideas of like, well, if you have infinite possibilities and in infinite Earths, there has to be ones where things are just living hell. Uh, and the Batman Who Laughs universe is a lot like that. All of these dark multiverse worlds that this story introduced really opened up the possibilities for DC, not just with Batman, with, but with other characters too. And we're starting to see that with like the Dark Multiverse, Death of Superman and Blackest Night. There's a lot of events going on now. Even the uh, the Nightfall one, there is a lot 
of potential that this story unlocked. So I definitely think it belongs on the best list because of that, but also just because of how well it was written. Uh, Snyder was able to really make Batman feel human. I know he gets a lot of criticism for the God tier Batman, but he really has redefined Batman's interpretation in recent years. And not to completely drag Tom King, but something that sort of disheartens me about metal and Batman in recent years is just the quality level of stories like metal compared to the quality level of some of the stuff Tom King has written in Batman Rebirth. It's just astonishingly better um, than King's work, I think. And I think that's at least should be easy to agree on. I'm sure someone won't. Uh, but the next thing we actually have is Batman Cacophony. This is a horrible story. Um, I like Kevin Smith as a person. He seems like a really nice guy who really cares a lot about superheroes and the medium and uh, just everything. He, he has a passion is what I'm saying. There's really good things about Kevin Smith. But my issue with this story uh, is that it really mischaracterized Batman, like they say here. CBR is actually really right about this. Um, and there's too much potty humor, I guess. Like, I'm not someone who's offended by uh, gross-out humor. I mean, I love South Park, so I, I couldn't be. But it's not something that fit this title at all. Like, there's a lot of just ridiculous jokes that are very lowbrow. Joker's not funny at all. There's just nothing going on here that's really that interesting. Uh, also, they say that it introduces onomatopoeia. He actually was around before this in Green Arrow, so that's not really correct. Um, but I, I suppose it more introduced onomatopoeia to Batman, uh, if that's what they mean, I'm not sure. Again, this is sort of my issue with some of these lists, is I don't think things like this are fact-checked, really. Um, because I actually was doing some looking up of onomatopoeia earlier to sort of see where he originated from, and it was actually back in Green Arrow for first appearance, so... Uh, this is not where he showed up. As far as Nightfall being the best, I mean, what needs to be said about Nightfall? It, it is incredible. Uh, it's really revolutionary. It stayed part of the canon in some way or another, even after reboots, I think. Pretty much forever, just different versions of it. People love Nightfall. People love the characterization of Bane. Uh, it's a lot better than recent characterizations we've gotten of Bane, where he's just a brute. He's actually intelligent and understands Batman. He's able to beat him and able to do what a lot of villains never are able to. This also sort of explores an idea of a world without Batman and someone taking over that mantle but becoming power hungry uh, and not really being able to give it up. I think that Nightfall, it's one of those really interesting and iconic Batman stories that will never be beaten. But at the same time, this sort of does reinforce this idea for me that this is just picking from a list of I guess a Wikipedia list sort of of just the best Batman interpretations. There's not much on here that isn't well known. I mean, Nightfall is one of the most well-regarded Batman stories of all time. So now we move on to the Widening Gyre and Kevin Smith is not getting it easy here. This is actually the story where they reveal that Batman pissed himself. Uh, before when recording this, I had kind of confused that with Cacophony because they're just both bad. Um, and this is where he's essentially talking uh, to another hero, he's trying to encourage him, and he reveals that when he was younger, he accidentally pissed himself during a uh, during a mission. Yeah, is it, I guess, supposed to make Batman relatable? Sure. But it really just fits with this Smith-level crude humor that doesn't really fit that well in a Batman title, especially not in relation to the Dark Knight himself. It's just not really who he is. And it makes like his characterization weird. It's almost like he's a mix between the actual, um, the Adam West Batman and the Dark Knight Returns, like the dark brooding Batman. And I don't think that mixes very well. There's just a lot of stupid stuff in this story. Uh, it really didn't even finish. Like it essentially just stopped because people disliked it so much. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's really the reason why, but no one missed it so for the best we also have the long halloween again we're you know we're just pulling from a list i guess of the top batman stories ever 
Uh, everybody loves this story. What more needs to be said? It's really inspired a lot of other stories as well. There's really interesting portrayals of characters in here like Catwoman and Batman. I mean, it's it's a classic. I, I don't really even have anything to add to The Long Halloween other than, yeah, it belongs on a list, but uh, it's certainly not a unique pick. For worst, we're now moving on to All-Star Batman and Robin. Here's the thing. This is a controversial story, yes, like they point out. It's not very good. I don't think it belongs this high on the list. Maybe I have a soft spot for the Frank Miller Batman, and I, and I get that. I mean, there's a little bit of bias there for me because to me, that all that continuity, I think, is really good. I think there are ways to reason out why Batman is like this, but he is a huge dick. Uh, in this story, he's not very Batman-like. I have always, and this this is headcanoning, you can say whatever you want about it, uh, and I'm not Frank Miller. But the way I always read this is essentially in year one you have a Batman who's just starting out, who is a good guy but can't really figure it out, and then by the time you get to All-Star Batman and Robin years later, he's sort of in his peak. Uh, he's just taking on a ward in Dick Grayson. He's trying to form a soldier like he became, but he's not qualified to do so he is not qualified to be a parent and dick grayson is not qualified to be who batman wants him to be so it essentially comes off as batman is just a huge jerk he makes dick grayson eat rats in the bat cave uh, in order to do survival training and the writing is just silly it does have one of my favorite batman moments of all time in it where batman and uh <laughs> And uh, Dick Grayson's Robin are basically confronted by Hal Jordan's Green Lantern. And this is a version of Green Lantern who's still weak against the color yellow. So Frank Miller was really good at nitpicking and sort of uh, taking a dump on other superhero interpretations a little bit in these stories. And he sort of made Batman make a fool out of Hal Jordan. It was really funny. Uh, and he comes across as a huge jerk in a funny way in the story. But overall, this story is sort of poorly written i agree i don't know if it really belongs on the worst ever again this miller continuity here's the thing a lot of it's by comparison if you compare the dark knight returns or even dark knight master race to dk2 strikes again or all-star batman and robin they look horrendous yes but if you compare a lot of the modern day batman stories that are just boring or not interesting or have a cartoony depiction of the dark knight that's just dumb to these stories they're not any worse than those. So I don't understand this idea over time that everyone hates All-Star Batman and Robin. It's the worst thing ever. I mean, there really has been some very boring stories written by Tom King, like the whole story with Gotham and Gotham Girl in the very first volume of Batman Rebirth that are also just really bad and bland and don't have any charm to them. He's also written really good stories between Batman and Catwoman, so I'm not trying to just drag King here. But what I'm trying to say is that there has been this cognitive dissonance where people look back and pick something out like All-Star Batman and Robin as the worst ever, when there are things on the market just as dull or badly written, in my opinion, as it. It's just they're a little less cartoony, but if anything, All-Star Batman and Robin is memorable. And that's more than I can say for certain recent titles of Batman that have come out in the last five years. Next, we have The Dark Knight Returns on the list of the best. I mean, obviously this does belong here. Again, it really does read though as just picking off of a list. Uh, I don't have anything to say about this one. This might be my favorite Batman story of all time in terms of comics. So, I don't really feel like there's a lot to say. I think that it is very interesting. I think it's a really cool um, interpretation of Batman to come back to him after he's out of his prime, after he's retired, and he's trying to do this again. He's trying to train a new ward and soldier in Carrie Kelly's Robin. I think the, uh, the progression over the course of the Dark Knight canon, especially with Carrie Kelly in subsequent sequels, including the Dark Knight Master Race, is really interesting. And this sort of kicked off, this story sort of kicked off one of the most interesting Batman continuities in comics, I think. Uh, it's very different while staying true usually to the core of the character. And I think this story, like if you want to, 
You can just read Year One and The Dark Knight Returns way later and sort of get the gist of the Miller Batman and be good, but there's so much more to that universe that this introduces if you're interested in it. And I think that it's very much a gateway that got a lot of people into Batman. And this is also the story that sort of pulled Batman back from the cheesy character uh, that he had become with Adam West's uh, 60s Batman. And I know there's love for that Batman as well. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying he's bad, but this sort of brought Batman back to the interpretation that we would all grow to love uh, in our teenage years and adult years, pretty much for the rest of the continuity. Batman Odyssey, this is terrible. Uh, Batman Odyssey is a horrendous story. I tried to read it, I hate it. Uh, I'm not saying Neil Adams is a terrible writer, but holy cow, he was in this. It's so bad. There is good art in this, but it's a terrible story. I don't think it's so bad that it's good uh, at all. I think it's just really dumb. Like, what else can you say about it? There's dinosaurs, there's ridiculous crap in this, Batman with guns. It's all very silly and comes off as very lazy and uninteresting. And I don't think it's even worth owning. At one point I owned this book and I tried to give it a read and tried to give it the time of day to see like, is it really that bad or is it so bad that it's good? And no, it's just, it's just terrible. The final for best is Under the Red Hood. I would say that this is a Batman event, essentially. Like, I, I agree with that. I do think it's one of the best Batman stories written. However, it's not without its flaws. I think that the movie actually perfected some things that the book didn't get right, and I'm sure that's a controversial opinion, but some of this has been pointed out online too. But sort of the movie's idea to cut out some of the filler of this story and just focus on the heart of Jason Todd's relationship to Batman I think was very good. I think the story is able to do that very well in the comic though as well, and I think it is very influential. I don't know if I'd argue that it's the most important Batman story yet. Uh, that seems a bit much. I think I would put The Dark Knight Returns there because it actually brings Batman back to the version of the character everyone has grown to love and he's become, you know, a character worth millions or billions of dollars because of that story, probably. But, I digress, it is a very important and very interesting story that is worth recognizing, I fully agree. So while I might not agree with every single entry on this list, and I do think that they need more uh, in-depth explanations of what they mean with things like what is an event, uh, and what continuities are we looking at, etc. I think that this is probably the best Batman list or best comic book list we've taken a look at on the channel so far. So I do want to commend the author in terms of that. If there's anything that I would recommend for the people writing these articles, I guess it would be that they fully read some of the stories before diving into them. There's certain details that I think are missing, certain details like the onomatopoeia one that I think are just wrong or stated poorly. And I think that it sometimes reads as just grabbing Batman's most influential works off a wiki list or like the best recepted, uh, Batman stories with the best reception, I guess that would be how to say it, off of a Wikipedia or an online list and just reprinting it with some pictures. I'm not sure if that's the case or not. I don't want to insult the author, but that's just sort of what it comes across as to me at times. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. What are the five best and worst Batman, I guess stories, I don't like this term events, they're not all events, but stories to ever be printed in your opinion in comics, or even if you want to drag in movies and games to that list. Just what are, what are your opinions on the best Batman stories and the worst Batman stories? Because I think it's interesting that The Killing Joke didn't even make this. That's one of the most iconic Batman stories of all time. Didn't even show up on this list and yet other things did that were at that same tier. I don't know. I guess in a list you have to miss some things. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. I really appreciate all of you. Please be sure to check out our new subreddit over at reddit.com. Uh, it's the subreddit Degenerate J. I'll try to link to it somewhere in the description. And I will be seeing you in the next one. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed. Peace.